Welcome to Hay Festival's Book of the Month for November. My name is Megan Davis and I'm thrilled to be joining you today to discuss this glorious book, A Bachgen, A Wahaven, A Shoinog Ar Kefil, written of course in English by Charlie Marcusi and translated into the Welsh language by Maria Red Hopwood. I'm a journalist, I'm a bookworm, but more importantly today I'm here to guide you through this very exciting talk. It's a a real joy. But before we crack on with our panel this afternoon, I do have a few things to mention, a few housekeeping rules, if you will. If you're yet to get your hands on a copy of this book, as I've already shown you, there are copies available on the Hay Festival website, or of course, go out and support your local bookshop. The second thing on my list are your questions. I want today to be as interactive as possible. So if there's something you are itching for me to ask, something you really want to know here from Maririd or Charlie, please submit your questions using the questions function on the screen below. There are some very technical uh, wizards here at Hay Festival that will see all of those questions, filter them to me, and I promise I'll do my best to get through them as quickly as possible. If you're a Welsh speaker, or Sardichin Sharad Kimrag, a subtitled version of this conversation will be available shortly after broadcast. Felly cadwch leged ar ein gwyfannau cymdeithas, I'll keep an eye out. And if you're watching this on catch up, then I hope you enjoy. Um, and finally, the last thing I want to say is thank you. Thank you for donating to the festival's future fund whilst registering for today's event. You can continue to do so and support the festival by donating once again on the website. That's it. I think I've reached the end of my uh, list of things to tell you, which means that we can start today's very exciting Q&A. Today's book of the month, of course, as I've already mentioned, is the Welsh language translation of Charlie Marcusi's award-winning, chart-topping, record-breaking work, The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse. Now, this book was released in October 2019, if I'm correct, just a few months before I think it's fair to say the world definitely changed. It's little wonder then that this story of friendship, of kindness, adversity and resilience captured the imagination, but most importantly captured the hearts of millions of people across the world in various different languages. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Charlie's name, I have no doubt that you'll have seen his illustrations in shop windows, for example, on T-shirts, on the walls of hospitals, prisons, schools and refuges. His sentiments, his lessons, his thoughts and feelings, of course, through his work have been used by teachers, therapists and even by armies. Charlie Marcusi has multiple strings to his very enviable bow. He's worked for the Oxford University Press, The Spectator, alongside someone you might have heard of called Richard Curtis on the set of Love Actually, and even with Nelson Mandela on the Unity series. It gives me great joy as a Welsh speaker to see Charlie's work translated into yet another language, our language of course, Welsh. His words have been captured most beautifully by the award-winning poet, writer, academic and translator Maririd Hopwood. Now, if you don't know Maririd's name, she is one of Wales's most celebrated literary names. She's a three-time Eisteddfod prize winner, which I can promise you is no mean feat. She spent a period of time as the Children's Laureate of Wales. She's been the recipient of the Welsh Language Book of the Year, and she's also won the Tir Nanog Prize for her children's writing. If her literary accolades aren't enough, I'm very jealous of the fact that she also boasts uh, degrees in Spanish and in German. Finally, if I can catch my breath, her CV boasts the title of the Cymraeg Rhyngwladol Cymru Greadigol, or the Hay Festival Creative Wales International Fellow for 2020-2021. I think it's fair to say I'm with, with two very, very talented people. It's a real treat to be with you, Charlie and Maririd Croeso. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, if you'll um, allow me to start with you, I'm going to ask you how you're doing and how you feel seeing this book in the Welsh language. I'm OK. I'm all right. Thank you. I'm, I'm really moved to hear that um, Meredith's Mer um, just just how, how, how many things she's done. It's really um, just but I, I, I knew some of that, not all of that. So, um, yeah, I'm OK. I'm, I'm, I'm in, in slightly in awe of the company I'm sitting in. Um, and yeah, that I just actually sent a copy of the Welsh translation to my friend, who's a nurse um, in Wales. So, um, who's been waiting patiently 
French translation. So I, I just for that one reason alone, I think that she's had a hard two years. Um, so I, I'm glad she's got a copy. Um, you know, I love Wales, and I, I, I love, um, you know, seeing it in. I, I hand wrote. Yeah, I, I, it was fun to do the cover. You know, so it's a, it's a beautiful language. Um, yeah. Anyway, so there you go. That's how I feel. It's, uh, it's it's quite fitting that you'd send this book to your friend who's working at the NHS, because as you've yes. already mentioned, as I've mentioned, you know, this this is a story that's touched so many people. And you've said in the past, I know that that the four characters represent different elements of you as an individual, and, or, but also of, of us as people. Did you ever imagine it would be translated? Was that something that was on your kind of list of wishes for the book? I never, truly, never imagined that it would even be a book. So, the idea of it being translated was is is way beyond my my dreams. I think, um, you know, I, I I kind of wrote it. I did the drawings for um, uh, for my friends, for people that I care for, and 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 then I suppose when they were on Instagram, I shared them there. So, but the idea of a book to me was so grand and so outlandish and so it's what other people do it's you you it's not what you do you, you know I just was a scruffy person making drawings and so I, I for me it's always a shock and I'm you know and it's a lovely shock I mean shock has negative implications so I, I it's a, just a, a continued surprise really um that that it is where it is you know yeah. I recently saw a tweet actually with your illustrations in sort of plastered on the walls of the metro in Paris. That's how yeah. far reaching your work is. Did you see that? Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Yeah, the metro. <laughs> <laughs> Marie were you familiar with Charlie's work before you were approached to translate this book? Well, yes, and, and Charlie said there about a dream. This for me is certainly like a dream because uh, this book existed in our family long before anybody had had thought about asking uh, to have a Welsh translation. Uh, I remember seeing it. Um, it was just before Christmas 2019. It was on the till in one of the bookshops in Carmarthen and I was buying other books and, and the assistant said, oh, I'm sure you'd like this book. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I looked at the cover and it was so calm and everything else was so busy. Um, in our family, like probably many other families. And I thought, yes, one of my girls could, I'm sure, enjoy that book. And, and bringing a piece of that calm uh, wouldn't be a bad idea. And I took it home and, and we have fallen in love with it, uh, as so many other people have. Um, yeah, so then being asked to translate it was <laughs> was totally unexpected and, and a real thrill. But also, of course, there was a huge sense of responsibility and slight fear. <laughs> oh. Before we go on to talk about the process of that translation, Charlie, if you would, would you mind sort of summing up this story for us in a sentence for someone that hasn't yet got the chance to sit down and read it? Oh, uh, well, it's mainly pictures. Um, largely and it's a it's a book about a boy among a fox and a horse and it's really their their relationship with each other their relationships with each other and, and their journey into uh, I suppose being known fully known um, and facing their fears facing you know and they have quite big questions they talk about so it's it's a it's a it's a hard book to summarize um, but I'm, I hope I've done okay. But yeah, so it, the, the narrative story really is in the is in their conversation more than the events. The events have a few events happen, but it's largely their journey into each other and into being known, fully known, and fully loved. Yeah, it's you. You've touched on the the, the, the how difficult it is to summarise, Maria. If you, if I can turn to you and ask you how difficult it might have been to translate. I've done a little bit of translation, nothing comparable to the work that you've done. But I know that um, being able un to understand words is one thing, putting words together is one thing, but being able to translate a meaning is a real craft. Being able to, to translate a feeling and a quality is something that takes years to hone and craft. Can you talk us through that process a little bit? Where did you start? Yes, well, you know, this is not like translating, a, you know, some policy documents or an exercise this is uh, 
this is something else. Um, and uh, the German word for translation is übersetzen. And, and I like that because it literally means carrying from one uh, side of the river to the other. And of course, the, the, there are dangers inherent in that. And you want to get to the other side with as much of the original cargo as you possibly can without having caused any great catastrophe. So the first thing I think you have to do uh, with something like this is to, is to become totally familiar with the work. You've got to really read it and try your mm. best to get to the soul of it. Um, because this is a book for the soul. And, um, and the other thing that's striking about this book, of course, is the, is the respect it has uh, for the gaps, the spaces, it needs to breathe. And, and, and that's one thing I, I think is important in poems too. There's nothing worse than the poem with too many words, if that makes sense. And so the breathing, the light between the words, the, the, the gaps between the words here um, were equally important somehow. And when you translate, you have to think about that too. <laughs> and then there were difficult things in it to translate. <laughs> You, you touched there on what was difficult to translate. Charlie's work is short in parts and longer in others. It's pithy, it's idiomatic. There are beautiful quotations. How did the Welsh language lend itself to that style of writing? <laughs> yes. Um, well, some things came and you were happy thinking, well, we discussed briefly before we came on to this uh, airing now, the the gift of the word kutch we have in Welsh. So when that came about how a, a kutch is better than a cake, <laughs> then I thought, oh, die out, lucky. I can use that word and knowing that it was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but then, um, you know that word too, don't you, Charlie? I do, yeah, I like that word, yeah, it's a good word. <laughs> but then there were other things like winging it and turned on a sixpence and even the wild, unexpected things. Yeah difficult and then then you have to leave it and come back and and start again because you have to start again always especially with a shortish work because it has to flow completely I thought a bit mm. a little bit like writing um an englin uh, Charlie in Wales we have this form called an englin which is a four line poem with 30 syllables and that's pithy and needs a lot of thought and you can't waste any word so there's a bit of the quality of the Englyn, I think, in this <laughs> in this book. Charlie, you must have a great deal of trust in translators like Marere to take on your work and your vision, if you'll forgive me with such a cliche term there, but but you must have a lot of trust in your translators. Well, yeah, you do. I mean, like, obviously, because I, ultimately they know and you don't. Yeah. Um, but but often with some of the translators, we, we heard from them a lot. Like there were questions every... But but for the Welsh translation, <laughs> it was very quiet, amazingly so, um, and uh, impressively so. Yeah, so um, Nerid is obviously, um, you know, I, 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 the, the thing is, I'll never know. You know, I I don't know, I don't speak Welsh, and therefore I don't know how it how the meaning is carried. But I, judging from what you've just said, I have complete trust in what you've written. Um, and I actually really loved what you said about the gaps. And because when I was putting the book together, a lot of people who I, when I showed them, you know, I had it in a little ring binder, this book, and, I would, and people was often, people in the business would say, well, yeah, you know, you've probably got too many gaps there. And I, I said, but I, I, I want them. And they were, well, why? It's just blank, blank. I said, I, I don't think it is blank. There's nothing spaces that aren't blank spaces are there to for us to fill um and my favorite conversations are ones where you have long silences because there's trust you're not you're not uncomfortable with pauses mm -hmm. and i don't know whether that's communicated in the book why there are space but I, I i love the idea of having so i love that you recognize that you know um i mean you clearly recognize a lot I mean, so, I mean, I, I was saying earlier, I kind of feel your name should be huge on the cover of the book in this translation. <laughs> oh, the, the, the thing about the gaps is, um, I tell my students this, you know, that, that you have the words, but those gaps are key because that's where the, without the gaps, the creative process isn't complete because that's where the meaning comes. Right. And you have to, you have to, 
that's where you can interact between what was said and what you think and how you interpret. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yes, but there, but there were, but there were challenges and an enormous sense of responsibility. The other thing, um, Charlie, in 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 Camraig in Welsh, we our nouns every noun has a gender, so it's it's got to be either feminine or or masculine. And a key word here, the mole, or haven is feminine. Feminine, yeah. It, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that nuances um, things throughout. And then, of course, the word fox. Um, this, these are just problems in the title. <laughs> the, <laughs> the word fox, then we've got two words, and they're equally satisfactory. Because sometimes when a language has two words, one word is less well used or or more literary, has, has some kind of taste to it. But here we have... Um, Kadna and Shuinog. And after some deliberation, I, I went for Kadna because I went for Shuinog because Kadna has a bit of a bite to it that I thought was unnecessary. And this the sound, uh, which we write with two L's, uh, had some kind of depth and slowed it down a little bit. Uh, mm. I felt. So, so that was a conundrum. Uh, in yeah. <laughs> You've you've mentioned the words and the consideration that you gave to each word, that no word was wasted, and you've mentioned the gaps. I'm keen to talk now about the illustrations. Charlie, you say in your opening letter in, in your book that the illustrations are so important, the drawings, you need them, because they are, I think, if I can quote you here, if you'll allow me, they're like islands, places to get to in a sea of words. And that image, uh, the sea of words, instantly made me think of the the fact that we've been bombarded, I think it's fair to say, by information, particularly over the last year and a half, a lot of it negative, a lot of it quite dense. Do you think that the stillness of the image was a comfort to readers? Was it a comfort to you? Oh, so many things there. I, 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 I think making the drawings for me is a, is a form of, it calms me down. You know, I, I, I do get, I, I have anxiety often. And so drawing is one of the, I feel like I'm a runaway horse on the inside. And drawing has always, all my life since I was little, if I could just get something to make marks with, then I could stare at it and the whole world just stops. And it just calms down. Um, so for me, the process of drawing is very calming. Um, I, think, I think images, you know, like I remember when I was probably maybe 10 or 11 and, you know, I'd been reading books up till then and liking them. And then suddenly there was this, this this cliff edge where books suddenly decided or whoever was in charge decided that you've reached an age where pictures aren't necessary anymore you've grown out of them or you know so suddenly there were maybe one or two or maybe in the cage in the middle of some adventure book there'd be some photographs but there was there was books were no longer punctuated with visual things to lose yourself in and i remember feeling really sad like I felt bereft of, of images that I was then cast into this world of of type with no lines or color and um and I found myself you know secretly always going back all my life I've gone back to the graphic novels that I had when I was little whether it's you know Asterix or an Oblix or Tintin or or even um Edward Ardizzoni who I had I don't know if you've heard of him, but, but he, he, I would get lost in his world, which were, he drew and wrote his books. And I, for me, you know, I, I could lose myself in both. And I felt they were a, a marriage, a good marriage, you know. And I, I, you're right. I, I think in during this time, this last couple of years of so much fast information and fast images and words that maybe you know, still images do give something, a serenity, a, a, a time to, you know, breathe. Uh, maybe, not for everyone, but uh, I know I do, I hear from people who say they, they especially strangely that the, the NHS would print them out um, and put them on their walls. And, and I know some people didn't bother to read the words. They just liked the, the comfort of the, of the images. So, yeah, it's, it's, that's, a, that's a crazy privilege for me. To, to know that you can scribble away in some tiny room in some corner of the world and your what the marks you make on paper will give someone somewhere else some sense of comfort or peace as 
it's a, it's a mad idea. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I haven't really answered your question, have I? But, uh, you have, you have, without a doubt. But if you'll allow me to come back to you, because I think something that Charlie said there is, is really important about that comfort and that connection. As mm-hmm. someone who's multilingual, uh, I know that Welsh speak- speakers will be able to enjoy Charlie's work in English, but maybe they'll connect differently to it in Welsh if Welsh is their first language. What, what are your thoughts on that as someone that studies languages? Yeah, that's that's an interesting point because, yes, most of the readers of this Welsh book will be able to read the English book, if, if not all, that's sure. But I think we go back to that notion that this is a book for the soul. And I think we speak with the soul in our own language. I, I have a friend, Laura mm. Carrasco, who, who teaches yoga, and, and she has remarked often that the practice is more effective if she can lead in the language of the people that she's, that she's wow. showing. And, and I think w- with a book like this, where it is asking questions inside, uh, and it, we've got words for that, and I can't remember, I, I don't think they're in the book, but we've got one word called manues, that is that it is that place. I, I, there's not really an English word for that. It's where the soul lives. <laughs> and and, and you, you need sort of that. Um, and then the other word that strikes me hearing you speak there, Charlie, is this, this curious word we have in Welsh, uh, which is tang uh, which is which is a word for peace, although we have another word for peace. But it's about a peace between always two things, you and I- somebody else you and your creator or whatever you imagine that is, or you and yourself between the body and the soul. And and so many of these pages, you you can open it on, it doesn't really matter on which one. And there's there's an image and there are words and between them, they can bring that, the body and the soul back together. I think it brings that sense of Tang Never. Maybe we should have called it Tang Never. (laughs) It would have been easier for you to write down. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I love that word. That's a lovely word. Can Charlie, you say? One, can you say it one more time? Tang never. I'll 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 write it to you afterwards. Or I don't I do. know. Somebody in charge of whatever that chat thing is. It's T A N G, Tang N E F E double D. Tang never. It is a really lovely. Tang never. Dayan. That's perfect. <laughs> By the way, Megan, you were saying about the trust. What you don't know is after after I finished, and I assume this goes for all the translators, we had like a little exam, a piece of paper <laughs> with lots of questions asking, how did you translate X and Y? And, and, and of course, you wouldn't be surprised to know that they were the very things that caused difficulty. You think, oh, well, of course, yes, well, that was a really difficult thing. And, you know, and trying to remember how how we tackled that, how, you know, how I'd gone back and forth. And <laughs> so that I wasn't expecting the test. <laughs> who, gave, I, who gave you the exam? I don't understand that. Who who, who sent the questions? I don't know. It, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure where it came from. Um, but it was asking things like, you know, how did you... Uh, how did you translate? And then the, the you know the really difficult things like home and cake and the wild and I'm not sure where they came from, but I, I answered them as best as I could. Um, and then I then there was a place at the end where you could put the things that caused difficulty and yeah, and so, oh, winging it. I think winging it must have caused pretty much every language. I feel <laughs> terrible that I was somehow indirectly responsible for setting you an exam. <laughs> exams, exams were like. My idea of hell, so I'm really sorry. You know, <laughs> I don't know. No, no, it it was it, it was it was fantastic, really, because it really did make you think. Ah, yes, and and in a way relieved that that the passages that had caused you difficulty that there was an anticipation that they would have. Uh, right. that, so, mm. if we uh, if we stay with the with the language of exams and and classrooms and syllabuses Marira, do you know that in wales the, the the current education system is being looked at reconsidered reformed you might say um with uh, to simplify it for people at home with a focus on emotional intelligence um, and That's understanding good. and i have no doubt that this book once it, it's it's out there in the world in the welsh language could there could definitely be room for it couldn't there in the classroom 
Yes, it's, I don't know how much you know about this in England, but it is a radical reform. Uh, we're, we're introducing a, what they call a purpose-led curriculum. Wow. And the, the purpose is a four, and they're about developing the pupils into becoming confident, creative, healthy, enterprising and ethical citizens of Wales and the world. So it's not about go to school so we can stuff information into your head. So when you come out, you have uh, patients. I it's- love this. I, I, this. This makes my heart sink because I, I remember being about nine or ten or I, around there where I was in a chemistry lesson and I, I got overwhelmed with this question and I put my hand up and uh, the teacher said I didn't I didn't connect with chemistry very well and and he said yes Maxie I said can you just tell me why we're doing this (laughs) and he said excuse me I said "I, I just genuinely want to know why we're doing this like why why is it important that I understand potassium permanganates change in color if if you give me the why i will really learn this but i can't find one and it the 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 the, the lesson dissolved into this big discussion on what we where we were going why we were having you know it was really interesting and and it was inconclusive mm. and if this is the problem that, that we couldn't really fathom beyond well, so you pass exams, if you pass the exam, then you do this, and then you get there, and it's some kind of ladder you're on and of achievement and merit, and, and then you'll be better than other people you'll be because it's some kind of life is competitive. But, but hearing you speak, I think if you'd been there and you said, well, look at it this way, we would have all got really excited about education. You know? but this is not my curriculum. It, 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 it's well, I love it. Whatever you ever do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I do hope it'll be successful. It's going to cause, it's going to call for a lot of guts, though, and a lot of resources and, and, and a lot of help and support for the teachers who, who, who will. Yeah, of course. It's wonderful. But let's hope it'll work. And um Maybe we read a lot of copies of a bachgen or a hathen a show nagar kefil too. Maybe. But this is like, then then the subjects are divided into different areas, and one of the areas there are six of them, and they're areas of learning and experience, and one right. of them is health and well being. But I was just thinking, listening to you say that uh, speak that um, Charlie, I'm, I'm thinking again about differences between languages. Um, yes. The word for teacher is athro, and. That comes, as I understand it, from a, an original, an origin that means to nurture or to foster. Oh, lovely. And that's a very different idea from showing. It, it's yeah. which is where, where teacher comes on. So it's about, yeah, taking the, the whole, the individual in front of you and thinking, right, how can I foster this person? How can I nurture this person? And, and it is, if we could remember that as teachers, as Athra won, I think that would serve us really well. <laughs> it's a lovely, lovely. I mean, I, I, you know, I have good friends who are teachers, and it's they have a tough job, you know. And that, that's such a beautiful word that the nurturing rather than showing. I love that. Mm. On that note, I can't believe I'm saying this, but our 30 minutes as a trio, wow. which is quite something, isn't it? And I'm glad to report that lots of people have been in touch with questions. And I did promise that I would try my best to get through them. So if you're willing to take the first one, that would be wonderful. Charlie, it's for you from Fran. And Fran says, I love how you finish the book with look how far we've come instead of the traditional the end. Where did the mm. idea for this come from? Hi, Fran. Um, to be honest, I, I remember writing the end, you know, um, and thinking, well, that's the end. And I just didn't like the look of the word. And I just crossed it out um, and stared at it, thinking that's how I'd like it. And then, and then I was, so the process was not enjoying the feeling of the word. And then what alternative is there to the end? It's so finite being the end and I thought well why not just the the feeling is instead of declaring an ending why not declare celebrate you know the distance we've traveled celebrate you know particularly I would say last couple of years you know whatever in in life um I I felt happier more content um 
rather than there's something I've never enjoyed the word at the end anyway. I've never felt good about it. So I, 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 that, I just, it all came out at once. It just, I wrote the end, crossed it out and stared at it and then thought, no, and I wrote, look how, and I didn't think much of it. I just, because the book's made of hundreds of thousands of thousands of pieces of paper that I've drawn on and most of them didn't get in the book. But that one just hung around and it seemed like the right thing. Um, and I, I think the, 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 the message of the book also is, you know, to do with the journey. And it's, it's um, and sometimes, you know, we feel like, as the boy says, we've got such a long way to go. Um, and it's important to remember how far you've come. And I think, you know, rather than say the end, just say, well, look, how far. I, that, 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 it, it's no more complex than that. I wish I had a deeper <laughs> answer. Um, so it was more instinctual. It was more from deep within me rather than some kind of calculated objective statement. Um, I, I feel it's more comforting um, to see, to be reminded of our journey and how, how well we've done in spite of things rather than just the end, <laughs> goodbye, you know. Um, Taking a moment to, to, to process where we've been and what we've learned. I think it's a, a lesson we've all learned in the last couple of months, definitely. Yeah. We have a question for you from Meyer, and Meyer says, Charlie has some pages with just illustrations to tell the story. Did that make the process of translation harder for you or easier? Hello, Meyer. Oh, easier, for sure. <laughs> um, because the you really need to look at these illustrations if you want to have any chance of getting the right words, because they move you on to the next sentiment, the next feeling. And, and the words then that come next are not without reference to the, the drawings, the illustrations that went before. And so, yes, they, they definitely did make it easier because it was a page that I didn't have to think <laughs> for that page at least. And it helped me greatly with the next one or the one before it. Charlie, we have a question from Hannah, which I think will um, sort of build nicely on the, on the question we've just had from, from Meyer. Have you ever had to change the illustrations to make sense to other uh, language speakers? Maybe that an image didn't quite work, make sense in a different culture or language? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, not that I'm aware of. I don't think so. Um, it's a great question. Mm. Uh, it, as far as I remember... I didn't change any image, no. So the, but, yeah, it's interesting to thought, yeah. We've got yeah. another question from Joseph. Um, and Joseph uh, has sort of actually written a question that I'd scripted for you, Marira. It says, um, I'm wondering if you read the Spanish translation before you read the Welsh, and if so, did it impact your translation at all? No, I'm afraid I didn't, but I'm certainly going to now, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and I won't I, I I won't wait until I I have found the Spanish one and and any others. But but to go back to that that previous question, of course, you're you're right, Charlie. It is a very good question because animals and signs and ha yeah. have different meanings, don't they? In in yeah. different. Um, I remember being on a on a translation workshop once with, with a friend, and now a friend from India, and we were working on a book from Iceland that was all about socks going missing behind radiators. And the socks and the radiators just wasn't a thing for her in, in, in Mumbai. So we had to ditch that project. Yeah, but yeah. It can cause mm, challenges. <laughs> Charlie, the, the New York Times actually said, and this this figure could be incorrect by now due to the success of your work, but that your work had been translated into 17 different languages. I'm assuming you don't speak 17 languages. So how, how does it feel knowing that there are all of these different people consuming your work in various different corners of the earth? I, yeah, I feel I feel a strange sense of... Um... I don't know. It's it's a it's a sense of privilege that so many people have put their minds to translating them in the first place. Um, I find I just find it a bit overwhelming um, and grateful. And uh, I, I I suppose I would love to 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 have a, an in depth understanding of each language so I could see how the translations are. And you know, um, 
um, Malad's translation to Welsh, I would love to hear it, and but would also know the language well enough to understand. Because I bet each translation has a slightly different, each translator will have a, a different soul and a different take. And, and also the, you know, I remember some, some countries didn't have words for, you know, I think there's one, I can't remember which country it was, didn't have a word for kind, which I remember thinking that's quite a thing. Um, so what, 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 what words did you choose and um, how did they come across? So yeah, I, I'm amazed, I'm amazed to be, to be to, to to know that all these languages are uh, that the, the drawings have you know inter, intermingled with these words that I'll never understand. It's a strange feeling, yeah, yeah. We have a question from Pat, who's written in and asked, "Did you have any special uh, group of people or readers in mind when you wrote this? In particular, children or adults, but, uh, or in particular, a profession such as nurses, as you've already referenced, or teachers?" No, I didn't. I, 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 I just tried to, to write as simply and as honestly as I could. Um, and I, had, you know, I think in the introduction it says it's for anyone whether they're eighty or eight, and I think some are even some readers are even four, and some are in their nineties. So I, 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 I'm so thrilled that you know I didn't really have a brief. I didn't give myself a brief because it was it was never going to be a book. So the book. It sort of, it was a ret- in ret- We look back at all the drawings and said, "Well, there's something. There is a there is a body of work that we can put together." So, um, and I had no. I have friends who have children, and I have friends who have grandparents, and and my mother likes the drawings as well. So my mother's little sunroom is covered in the the drawings. Um, so I, I think it's a again a a blurry answer, but so it just. In brief, no, I had no age range in my head. Um, I just tried to feel deep within me what is right to write, regardless of who's reading it, and hope that it lands somewhere. And for, for many, I'm sure it doesn't, but you know, you can't please everybody. Um, but I think, you know, in a way, it's like I, I, this is going to odd answer, but I think music, you know, there, are some, there are some sounds, some piece of music that everybody mo- is moved by. Um, I, 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 f- sometimes when I can't sleep at three in the morning or whatever, I, I watch, um, and this is absolutely true, I watch the old games of rugby in Card- Cardiff Arms Park, and I watch, I watch Gareth Edwards, and I watch um, all these people. Um, and, uh, yeah, in fact, two nights ago I was doing this, and these, <laughs> the nights, J.P.R. Williams and J.J. Williams on heroes and then you hear the whole you hear Cardiff Arms Park start singing um Bread of Heaven and you see in in the crowd you see children you see all all ages sing um and I, you know that's to me a universal language and hopefully you know the book's done the same uh, <laughs> that's my dog um I think you have someone in the background that agrees with you there, definitely. Yeah, Barney, that's Barney. Yeah, he's actually he's actually the, the inspiration for them all. Um because uh, he's just greedy. <laughs> he's obsessed with not okay for them. I, mean, I, um, I, I know that was an odd qu- an odd way of answering the question. Um but uh, anyway, there you go. We have that, uh, but Barney is special though, isn't he? Because he actually sort of contributed to the book indirectly by walking across some of your pages. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> because, you know, I do the drawings in ink and then um, there's no space. So I would just spread them across the studio floor everywhere and on top of armchairs. Da, 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 and then um, he often just walked straight across them. Um, and he did on that one drawing that was... Um, what's our greatest illusion that, um, and that life should be perfect or something like that, the greatest illusions of life. And, and it was just hilarious that he chose that one to really mess up. <laughs> you, couldn't have, you couldn't have asked him. <laughs> no, I mean, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's, <laughs> it's extraordinary, yeah, yeah. I think it's and that was, the same, that was the same night that, the, that I found a, a piece of paper with the, um, the teacup stain on. Um, yeah and so I just drew them looking at it and it just looked like the moon is that the moon 
<laughs> it's particularly fitting that you choose to share so much of your work on Instagram, a platform that's right. renowned for perfection and curated perfection at that. How how sort of how do you feel that people respond to your work on there? Because you've you've shared drawings at particularly painful times for for us as a nation and I refer specifically to the work you shared uh, when we we learned of the murder of Sarah Everard for example you the 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 work you share is so powerful I wonder how people respond to that you want you wonder how they respond to 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 your sharing about Sarah or just about about you at particular moments in time when you share Work at, at times of, as I say, sort of collective grief and pain. Grief. Um, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, I, 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 it, I sometimes I find it hard to describe how that feels. But um, I, I, I know that when she went, when Sarah, for instance, went missing, um, one of her friends emailed me or, and said, would you, um, do a drawing to help us look for her? And so that they were, printed out and stuck around Clapham Common and stuff. Um, and then obviously we know what happened and then I did some drawings um, in memory for her and then you get this outpouring of emotion that comes with them from people. And I, you know, I, it's just, I, you know, it's sort of, it's, it's agony and a privilege and tragic and, you know, moving that you can, um, give people a voice to perhaps to their emotions or make an image that summarizes how they feel or I don't know um yeah so I I think I've found myself in this position over time you know where whether it's Sarah or or, or other people that have or, or the pandemics have or the NHS or you know all these things where you you feel this depth of feeling towards a a person or a group of people who are going through something um even the fires in Australia or whatever and yeah so I just sit in right here in this little room and just scribble away and then and then put them out there and um uh yeah it's it's difficult for me to, to find ways but you know it's a huge privilege um and I love reading what people say and I I try to reply sometimes I can't um I, I do try. Um, I think yeah. I speak for a lot of people when I say that your drawings, your words give an immense amount of comfort. Um, I, oh. I hope you'll allow, allow me to say that. You uh, you definitely bring a lot of comfort and, and joy to, to lots of people. And on that note, I, I can't believe actually that we've we've made it to the end of of our of our chat but I shouldn't say the end should I I should take a moment to reflect on on how far we've come yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I um before we virtually leave this lovely space I wish wish we could stay longer um please allow me to remind you on behalf of the Hay Festival that the Hay Festival winter weekend is happening in person if you feel comfortable going and and sharing safe uh, space safely with people it's happening in a couple of weeks time tickets are available on the website and it's going to be a brilliant event i have no doubt about it between the 24th and the 28th of november it's one not to be missed but for today thank you for joining us i hope you can agree that it's been a, a really really lovely chat charlie mackesy marily topwood thank you diolch and vawr and hopefully next time we can sit in the same room and uh, and talk about the next amazing project you you, you both will undoubtedly achieve diolch thank you so much thanks for having us <laughs>